Hello, welcome to my channel. This video has been long overdue and today is the day. In this episode, let's talk about using fertilizers, also known as plant food, to grow African violets. If you're new to this channel, a little disclaimer here, I'm a hobby grower of African violets and not a fertilizer expert. Having started growing my collection four years ago, in 2019, I still got a lot to learn about African violets. And at this point, I consider myself an intermediate grower. So in this video, I will be sharing what I have learned about fertilizers so far and how I have been using them to grow my plants in hope that my knowledge and experience can help fellow African violet enthusiasts. As we go along, I will be mentioning products and reading materials, and I will include links to them in the description box under this video. So let's start with fertilizer basics. If you ever shopped for fertilizers, you've probably seen the words plant food on the fertilizer labels. Here we see planting and growing food, liquid plant food, orchid food, flower food, and so on. Is fertilizer really the same as plant food? Strictly speaking, plants make their own food using the elements available in the atmosphere and the soil. Fertilizers, on the other hand, are products that we add to the soil to increase the nutrient levels in the soil for the plant consumption. Because the difference between plant nutrition and plant fertilization is not always obvious, and because fertilizer companies want to increase sales, they use the words plant food on the fertilizer packaging. What do fertilizers do? Fertilizers add nutrients to the soil or to plant tissues, if it's a foliar type of fertilizer that plants need for healthy growth. Fertilizers can be grouped by different criteria, such as origin, state of matter, number of elements, purpose of use, etc. By origin, fertilizers can be natural or organic and synthetic. Organic fertilizers are produced from bone meal, fish, kelp, molasses, earthworm castings, and other products of nature. The production of synthetic fertilizers requires prepared chemicals. By state of matter, fertilizers can be liquid and solid. Orchid Pro, for example, is a liquid fertilizer, as it shows on the label. And Jack's classic all-purpose fertilizer is a solid fertilizer in the powder form. And let's take a closer look at what's inside. Here we have this blue powder-like substance that is a fertilizer. And solid fertilizers usually come with measuring spoons. They can be water-soluble, and usually that is indicated on the label as well. Or they can be slow release. They sometimes can be also controlled release, designed to release nutrients into the soil, not immediately, but gradually at a certain rate. By number of nutrients, they can be single or straight. For example, they may contain only nitrogen and not any other nutrients, or they can be multi-nutrient when they contain more, two or more nutrients. So um, the important here is just to read the numbers on the label, but not only in the front of the packaging, but also on the reverse label. So here, for example, we can see numbers one, zero, and zero, and we may think that there is only one uh, element, one nutrient here in this uh, type of fertilizer, 
and this is a supplement called Cal Mug, which is, stands for calcium and magnesium, but one here actually stands for nitrogen. So as we go to the reverse label, we can see that it has 1% nitrogen, that's one nutrient, but it also has calcium and magnesium at 3% and 0.9% respectively. So this one is a multi-nutrient fertilizer. Often multi-nutrient fertilizers have all three main nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And they are uh, represented by these numbers on the main uh, front label of the fertilizer. Uh, for example, Jack's Classic has 20% of nitrogen, 20% of phosphorus, and 20% of potassium. And then here we see the same 10, 10, 10. Sometimes they are the same numbers and sometimes the numbers are different. For example, Orchid Pro Liquid Plant Food has 7% of nitrogen, 8% of phosphorus, and 6% of potassium. Some fertilizers also have additional elements. And on the reverse label here of Jack's Classic, you can see that they also have micronutrients such as boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. And these nutrients vary. So some fertilizers may have more of the micronutrients and others may have less of them. So it's important to pay attention not only to the front label, but also like look at the reverse labels and make sure you see all the contents. And sometimes, for example, this one, it doesn't have any um, analysis uh, of the nutrients on the front label and on the reverse it lists all of them nitrogen phosphate or phosphorus uh, potassium and it also tells us uh, the source of these nutrients which sometimes is also important to pay attention to finally by the purpose of use some fertilizers are designed to be all-purpose fertilizers, for example, Jack's Classic. And here we can see that it is designed for use on all indoor and outdoor plants, bedding and container plants, trees and shrubs, vegetables and fruits. And others are designed for specific plant types. For example, here we see three different fertilizers for orchids. Here is a fertilizer for bonsai and so on. There are also fertilizers designed specifically for African violets, including Schultz and other brands. I haven't used them for my plants, so here I will talk about the other kinds of fertilizers that I have used that are not African violet specific. I've used all-purpose fertilizers and also fertilizers designed for other types of plants, solid and liquid. So with solid fertilizers, I have used Jack's Classic here. And I also have used a liquid all-purpose fertilizer that I currently don't have. It's by the same brand as this Orchid Pro fertilizer, but it, it is called Dynagro Grow Liquid Plant Food. And I will include a little clip from the older videos where I show that particular fertilizer these three types of fertilizers. So they are Dynagro Liquid Plant Food 795 NPK ratio, and I use one fourth teaspoon per gallon of water of Dynagro. And then sometimes I use Jex All Purpose Classic at 20-20-20 NPK ratio at one eighth teaspoon per gallon of water. And Sometimes I use Orchid Plus at 20-14-13 NPK ratio at 1 fourth teaspoon per gallon of water. And in addition to all-purpose fertilizers, I have also used plant-specific fertilizers designed for orchids. For example, I've used this solid one called Better Grow Orchid Plus, water-soluble orchid food, and I used uh, the Dynagrow product Orchid Pro liquid plant food. 
when choosing solid fertilizers, I make sure that the label says water soluble, like here on Jack's All Purpose, or here on Orchid Plus, it says water soluble, Orchid Food, and I do not use slow release fertilizers. Usually they can come in granules and they kind of, um, they're designed to slowly release the nutrients from the granules. And because I wick water my African violets, I want to control the amount of nutrients they receive. So I do not use the slow release granular types. When choosing fertilizer, I pay attention to the fertilizer content to make sure it has all three main elements, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And they are usually listed as three numbers with dashes. And the first number is nitrogen, the second is phosphorus, and the third one is potassium. And on the full analysis on the reverse label, they're usually listed on top. Nitrogen usually is listed with the sources of nitrogen. Uh, phosphorus usually uh, is listed as phosphate. And potassium is usually listed as soluble potash. Uh, and then the micronutrients. I always um, choose the ones that have micronutrients because they're also very helpful for the plant growth. And here, for example, Orchid Pro has um, also all three main elements listed at seven, eight, and 6%. And then on the back, we can see the full analysis here with additional micronutrients. There is a great article on the Optimara website talking about plant nutrition and the importance of the main elements and the micronutrients for the African violet's growth. I will include a link to it in the description box. Nitrogen is important for overall growth in the development of green leaves and stems. Phosphorus aids in the production of healthy roots and flowers. And potassium helps with accumulation and movement of carbohydrates when the African violets grow and also is good for blooms and overall growth. For nitrogen, uh, as I said, there are sources listed here and it's important to pay attention where the nitrogen comes from. And there are two schools of thought on the, specifically on the urea de derived nitrogen uh, when it's present in fertilizers. Here we see in Dynagro nitrogen uh, comes from different sources um, and Jack's All Purpose Classic has some urea nitrogen in it. So um, some believe that urea derived nitrogen causes root burn in African violets and other growers say that it's okay to use it. In terms of the nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium content, I prefer using balanced fertilizers and the fertilizers that are called balanced usually have the equal proportions of all three main elements. So for example, here, um, Jack's Classic has equal proportions or equal amount of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium at 20% respectively. And sometimes I also use fertilizers that have approximately the same amount of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. For example, Orchid Pro has um, the amounts of these three elements at seven, eight and 6% respectively. I used to use Dynagro liquid plant food and it had a slightly higher amount of phosphorus and slightly lower amount of potassium. And then I switched to Orchid Pro because it is a little bit more balanced than the Dynagro Grow liquid plant food. Sometimes people ask me if I use Bloom Boosters to grow my African violets. Bloom Booster is the fertilizer kind that has a higher ratio of middle element, phosphorus. For example, miracle Grow, Bloom Booster, Flower Food has the middle element listed at 30%, which indicates that there is 30% of phosphorus in this Bloom Booster and 15% of nitrogen and potassium respectively. Some growers report using Bloom Booster successfully, especially to encourage good blooming for shows. I personally do not use Bloom Boosters. In my growing conditions, I noticed that African violets bloom well without them, as you can see in my monthly blooms videos. 
as a new grower, when I first started growing them, I did try using this particular kind at 15, 30, 15 nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And I must have used it incorrectly because I had lost a few plants to it. I then learned that while phosphorus is critical for plant growth, plants don't need a lot of it and it can become toxic if used in excess. In fertilizers, phosphorus comes from phosphate as shown on the label of this particular product. Here we see available phosphate. And phosphate is best utilized by the plants when the soil pH is slightly acidic. So it needs to be at a certain acidity level for phosphorus or phosphate to be consumed properly. The soil acidity is measured in pH. When the soil pH falls below 6.0 or when it rises above 7.5, plants can become starved for lack of available phosphate. And this condition is called as phosphate lockup. And what happens to the unutilized phosphate, it accumulates in the soil making it toxic and it reduces the plant's ability to take up required micronutrients, particularly iron and zinc, leading to iron and zinc deficiency. And I will include Optimar sources describing the symptoms of iron and zinc deficiency in the description box. I have also used Super Thrive. This is a fertilizer that has vitamin B1 in addition to nitrogen. And I used to add some of it in the water when I was wake watering African violets. Uh, it doesn't have phosphorus and potassium. And because I prefer using balanced fertilizers, I rarely use this particular kind. Right now for the plants that are blooming or preparing to bloom and need a little bit more phosphorus, I use Orchid Pro by Dynagro at 786 an NPK ratio. This particular fertilizer is also good because it has calcium and magnesium and I'll address the benefits of these two elements in a bit. And um, for the plants that I want just to grow foliage, like uh, for baby plants and starter African violets, I use Fox Farm at six, uh, Fox Farm Grow Big at six, four and four NPK ratio. And because it doesn't have calcium and magnesium, I supplement with CalMag at one zero zero NPK. And this one has 3% calcium uh, on the back label and 0.9% of magnesium. It's especially beneficial to use CalMag a supplement because I use rainwater, especially in the rain season. Calcium and magnesium is important because it helps buffer the acidity in the peat-based grown medium. And because African violets can only process nutrients from the soil at a certain acidity level, if we don't use calcium and magnesium, then the soil grows increasingly acidic and then um, African violets stop receiving the necessary nutrients and can become nutrient deficient. I use Orchid Pro for weak watered plants and the Grow Big and CalMag for top watered plants. I tried mixing these two first to see if I can use them for wick watering. And here I have even a bottle listing these two and the dosage that I used to use. However, I discovered that when you mix these two uh, fertilizers uh, with water together, they create some kind of chemical reaction and there is like a suspension of microparticles in the water that makes it kind of foggy and have some flakes uh, floating in the water. So I stopped mixing them together with water and now I just use either Fox Farm uh, or Calmax uh, separately just to top water my plants. And Orchid Pro, as I mentioned, already has calcium and magnesium in it and I use it for wick watering. Now I'll talk about 
when and how I fertilize my African violets. Because I make my own potting mix using fertilizer-free components, uh, it, mostly I use peat moss like Canarian sphagnum moss or Promix BX and perlite, my African violets receive fertilizers right away and I keep fertilizing them on a regular basis with the exception of the coldest and the hottest months. For top watered plants, I usually follow instructions for indoor plants on the fertilizer packaging and make sure that the soil is moist before I apply the fertilizer because otherwise it can burn the roots, the delicate roots of African violet plants. I usually also reduce the um, dosage. So here, for example, requires the big, the Fox farm calls for two, three teaspoons for regular general feeding per gallon of water. And I just usually use one teaspoon per gallon of water of Fox farm grow big. For quick watering, I also reduce uh, the dosage uh, indicated on the label. For example, the Dynagro Orchid Pro has it at half a teaspoon of Orchid Pro per, per gallon of water every time you water. But because I wick water, I reduce it further and I just use one fourth teaspoon per gallon of water of Orchid Pro. When using fertilizers that come in small packages, Sometimes it's uh, tricky to find the proper tools to measure the fertilizer. For example, this uh, one fourth measuring teaspoon doesn't really fit into the opening of the bottle. And if I try pouring it out, then it creates a mess. So I use usually the dropper here. One fourth teaspoon is uh, about 1.23 milliliter. And I usually just use one milliliter. For my plants so it's easy to measure here just using the measuring scale here and here we go and that's how much i use just one milliliter of uh, orchid pro dynagro food and then i just have to drop it here into the bottle of water and that's it now it's done and i mix it up a little bit just shaking the bottle and it's ready to be used for my wick watering. In the next episode, we'll talk about how to recognize that an African violet needs fertilizing and how to avoid over-fertilizing with African violets.